Y'all get ready. Yes, you get ready. Shout out to all my tea sippers out there. We are gathered here today to sip some tea, honey. So make sure you guys have your tea cups ready because you already know this tea is what? Piping hot. Hey, tea sippers, I hope you guys are doing good today. So I want to come on here and basically do a breakdown that I promised of the whole Vanessa Bryant, Kobe Bryant situation, why her mother is suing her, all of the drama, their backstory, because I get so tired of this narrative still being spun to this day that Jelly Bean Bryant and Pamela Bryant are the worst people in the world. The reason why she doesn't deal with them is because they're racist. For years, there's been all this shade thrown at the Bryant family and they've really done nothing wrong in this situation but tried their hardest to protect their son. Now we see that everything that they tried hard to protect their son from, we see it now spiraling out of control before our eyes. Um, back in September, Vanessa's mother, Sophia Lane, she went and did a whole interview on Telemundo basically blasting Vanessa, saying that Vanessa kicked her out of her home, took her cars, took her jewelry, made her look like the worst person in the world. So Vanessa came and she rebutted that. And then recently, as of a week ago, it came out that the mother is suing Vanessa for $5 million. And Vanessa has also responded to that lawsuit. So I want you guys to go ahead and watch this clip. And I'm going to come back with the rest of the commentary. In that September 2020 interview, Vanessa Bryant's mom, Sophia Lane, claimed she had been kicked out of her home by her daughter. Now, things are getting messier. Sophia is suing Vanessa and the Kobe Bryant Trust for financial support, claiming Kobe promised to take care of her for the rest of her life before he and daughter Gianna died in January 2020. In these court docs obtained by ET, Sophia claims she worked unpaid as a longtime personal assistant and nanny for the family, which includes Kobe and Vanessa's other three daughters, Natalia, Bianca, and Capri. The docs also say, quote, Kobe Bryant's promises did not see the light of day as he is now deceased and Vanessa Bryant took each and every step she could to void and cancel all of Kobe Bryant's promises. She's amazing. I was there helping, you know, doing everything I possibly can to make the process easier for my wife. And, uh, you know, but ultimately, you know, she did all the work. I was just there just trying to help her out. <laughs> now, Vanessa is responding, claiming her mom is trying to extort a financial windfall from the family. In a statement to ET, she says, quote, I have supported her for nearly 20 years, and she was never my or Kobe's personal assistant, nor was she a nanny. She says her mom watched her granddaughters from time to time like most grandparents do, but adds, quote, she now wants to back charge me $96 per hour for supposedly working 12 hours a day for 18 years for watching her grandchildren. In reality, she only occasionally babysat my older girls when they were toddlers. Vanessa also addresses her mom's September interview. Quote, even after that betrayal, I was willing to provide my mother with monthly support for the rest of her life, and that wasn't good enough. She instead contacted me through intermediaries and demanded $5 million, a house, and a Mercedes SUV. Vanessa goes on to call her mom's lawsuit frivolous, disgraceful, and unimaginably hurtful and says, quote, my husband never promised my mother anything and he would be so disappointed in her behavior and lack of empathy. All right, so you guys just watch that clip and this whole situation is very disturbing, but like I told black folks, this is not our damn fight, okay? So let them fight it out in court. I feel no ways. This is what you call karma. OK, and I'm not saying necessarily on Vanessa's part, but definitely on the mother's part. And I'm going to break down why I say that this is karma. So what I want to do in this video, because it's going to be long, I'm going to show you the backstory of Kobe and how he grew up and, you know, what he was going through at the time. And then I'm also going to show you the backstory of Vanessa and how they came together. So let's go ahead and talk about good old Kobe Bryant. Now, for y'all who don't know who were too young, Kobe was a phenomenon. He was my generation's basically Michael Jordan, right? So we watched Kobe grow from high school, go straight from high school into the NBA. He was one of the first ones to do it. One of the nicknames that they called Kobe back then, he was a test two baby of the NBA. This had never been done before. Before, when kids were really good in high school, you had to go to college. And then from college, you got drafted. So Kobe Bryant went to Laura Marion High School um, in the suburbs of Philadelphia. 
Um, his father was from Philly, and his father played overseas. And for years, I think about eight years, he played professional basketball overseas in Italy. Kobe and his sister and his entire family, they knew Italian very fluently. That is where he was raised. Then they ended up moving back to America. So his family was very, very close. They were very, very tight-knit. He did not come from a broken home, as so many people want to speculate. Both his parents were in his life. And Kobe was very much a phenomenon. Um, they knew from the time he entered high school that he was going to be big. His daddy, Jelly Bean, had been training Kobe since he was a baby Jelly Bean, okay? So it was very odd, even back then, to have cameras following high school students. You know, there was a lot of hype around him, and his father knew how to build that hype because why his father himself was in the NBA. And so he wanted to, you know, basically have his son follow in his footsteps, kind of like how LeBron is right now with Bronny. But this was back in the 90s, so this was very new. There was no social media. So there'd be cameras following him around, not all the time, but, you know, they would go and, and just film him in classes and just show, you know, he's a normal high school kid kid but he's gonna be a phenom so I want you guys to watch both of these old school clips of Kobe Bryant just being a regular high school student I want to speak in arts I'm about to give a world presentation two and a half minutes three minutes I haven't prepared anything so I'm about to wing it so I don't know what, we'll see what happens I just pick a seat. Laura! Oh, man. I told you I do interviews. Yeah? Hi, Kobe. What's up, Mike? How you doing? <laughs> All right, man. I told her everything you know about. Yeah. All right. 18. So you are the second youngest player in the NBA? Yep. yep. So I'm one of the old guys in the league. Did you ever have any concerns? about jumping straight to high school, from high school right into the pros? No. No? No. I mean, I had people all around me uh, since ninth grade, because I knew that this is something that I wanted to do, it was something I was considering since that time. So I kind of tried to prepare myself, you know, leading up to that point. So I talked to as many NBA players as I could. I had my father there. So basically, when it came time to make the jump, I knew what I was getting into. So I understand you into video games as well? A little bit. Mm -hmm. A little bit. I play uh, NBA Live 97. Yeah, that's cool. That's your big game? Yeah. Well, my father is a really, really big fan of the game. Yeah. And I come home from practice or from the game, he'll be in my room playing the game. I'm like, Dad, what are you doing, man? I got to take a shower. I got to go to sleep. He's sitting there, oh, hold on, one more quarter, one more quarter. So my dad's a real big fan of it, but I, I try to play as much as I can, too. Mm -hmm. How about your mom? Uh, my mom's great. I love my mother. I love my mother to death. She's always there for me. Um, keeps me going. She's extremely hard worker. And uh, I love my mother to death. Yeah. Cool. Why were they in Italy? Well, my father played professional basketball over there for eight years. So uh, myself, my mother, and my two older sisters, their name is Sharia and another one is Shea, 20 and 19. And, you know, we went over there and uh, moved with my father. Started, I started first grade over there, went to Italian school. And, uh, and I think that, that helped us bond together even more because you know how to speak the language when you first went over there. So we didn't have anybody to rely on but ourselves. Right now, pretty much, I, I just try to keep everything focused on basketball right now. But if you're looking on later down the line, you know, I want to get married. You know, I want to have some healthy kids. And uh, I want to be able to raise my family you know, the way my parents were able to raise myself and my two older sisters. All right, so you guys saw both of those clips. And the, the second clip that I played was him doing an interview with Byron Allen. And you can see how he's talking, how he's talking about his parents. I mean, he admired his father. He loved his mother. He had a lot of, you know, he was very close with his sisters. You know, so to see how far their relationship got fractured in such a short amount of time is really sad when you know the backstory. So soon after that, Kobe Bryant ends up making it to the NBA. And his name is everywhere. Everybody knows who he is. You know, he's a phenomenon. Everybody loves him. Very handsome, very tall. But the whole time, you know, people tend to forget that before there was ever Vanessa Lane Bryant, there was a young black woman that he was dating who was his high school sweetheart. 
And her name was Jocelyn Ebron. And basically, they were introduced to each other via Kobe Bryant's cousin. And um, she she and her family were very, very close to the Bryants. She was more, she went to a private school. She was more demure, more classy. Her family really liked her. And a lot of times, she'd be over there in the family den. They'd be watching Kobe's high school basketball highlights and things like that. So the whole time, you know, she's assuming this is my boyfriend. We're together. You know, we're happy. We were trying to make things work, but the whole time they're steadily trying to push Kobe to be a media phenomenon. So even for his prom, his agent told him that it would be a better look for him to take Brandy to prom as opposed to his girlfriend because, you know, Brandy was a big star at the time. She had Moesha. And we say this all the time in Hollywood that a lot of these relationships do not come together organically. A lot of them are put together. You know what I'm saying? Just to create a buzz, just to sell papers. And this was a big deal. I remember this happening when I was in high school. Oh, my God. Brandy and Kobe are dating. They went to prom. And it was so cute. You know, it was like young teenage black love. But what we didn't know and what I didn't know at the time is that he had a whole girlfriend. So this caused a lot of hurt for her. Because, like I said, uh, Jocelyn was 16 at the time. Kobe um, was 18. And Brandy was this megastar. So it's like, how could she compete? You know, she was in love with him. That was her first love. And he was, you know, by all accounts, in love with her. But for the greater good, it looked better for him to be seen with Brandy on his arm as opposed to his, you know, regular, you know, schmeggler girlfriend. So there's an old news article from 2003 where she kind of speaks about this with Newsweek called Kobe Off the Court. So I'm going to go ahead and just read you guys some things from this old news article. Kobe was royalty at home. His sisters, Shahara and Shea, were his biggest cheerleaders. His mother, Pam, did the laundry, cooked all his meals, kept him on schedule, and never missed his game. His father, Joe, focused on building a lucrative career for his son, landing him an agent and an endorsement deal with Adidas even before he was out of high school. Everything sort of focused on him and around him, remembers Ebron. His sisters seemed to just accept that, and he was the only son and the king of it all, really. Jocelyn Ebron didn't see any of these defects when she met young Kobe at a family barbecue. She had been invited to by his cousin. He was just this mild-mannered, quiet guy, remembers Jocelyn, who was attending a Roman Catholic girl school at the time I liked him because he wasn't a player with a lot of game you know the kind of guy who tries to date 10 girls at a time to be cool Kobe was smitten and soon Jocelyn became a fixture around the Bryant home eating meals with the family and watching Kobe's basketball tapes if Jocelyn didn't realize that her boyfriend's career came first she got a dose of reality when Kobe announced that his prom date would be teen R&B singer Brandy whom he met for a split second at the Essence Magazine Awards he he told me that his agent wanted him to ask Brandy because it would help him gain attention, said Ebron. I was hurt, but he said it was for the best, so I had to accept that. Jocelyn wasn't the only one caught off guard. Brandy didn't know who he was, says an associate of the singer, but she thought he was cute, and after seeing the picture and remembering him from the award show, besides, she wanted to go to prom. Reporters were on hand to record every precious moment as Brandy was whisked away from the Bryant family's Tudor-style home after shutter time with his beaming parents and grandparents. As one friend of the family observed, it seemed like a warm, normal family just proud of their son on their big day. But I guess looking back on it, it seemed kind of orchestrated. In fact, much of Kobe's life was orchestrated by his parents. Instead of pushing Kobe to go to college, he was an honor student and scored a 1080 on his SATs. Joe Bryant worked overtime with an agent that he had handpicked, Aaron Tullum, to make sure his son would be a Laker come draft day 1996. When the Lakers drew a low number and Kobe was scooped up by the Charlotte Hornets, Joe helped broker a deal that saw Vlad Divic traded to the Hornets in exchange for Bryant. Kobe relocated to Los Angeles that summer, family in tow, and settled with them in a six-bedroom, six-bathroom mansion he bought in the Pacific Palisades. Meanwhile, his mother tried to nurture his budding relationship with Brandy, who was starring in a hit UPN show, Moesha. His parents and her parents were regularly in contact about the two, says a source close to both families. They thought a true romance was bound to happen when they lived in the same city. So obviously, the Brandy and Kobe thing didn't work out because she wasn't that into him. So at the time, you know, he went back to his girlfriend. They were still dating. 
So now we fast forward. He's on the Los Angeles Lakers, but it's really hard for Kobe. He's not really getting along with his teammates because he does not have the social skills. Remember, he was raised until about the age of 14 in Italy. Then he went to Philly. He was playing against high school kids, but he never got that college experience to play with older guys. So he went from being a high school kid to playing with grown men. And Shaquille O'Neal had just signed a really lucrative contract to come to the Los Angeles to come to Los Angeles from the Orlando Magic. So that caused kind of like a back and forth with them because he felt like Kobe didn't know his place and Kobe was used to being the star. He was a star everywhere he went. Um, people, you know, just loved him and admired him. But on the Lakers team, not so much. They didn't give a shit. So this article goes on to say that Billy Hunter, president of the NBA Players Association, said that they had issues with him because of his attitude. Other players thought he was playing arrogant. We're all arrogant, but Kobe just had more confidence in his ability. A friend of Kobe Bryant and a shooting guard for the Houston Rockets said, Bryant didn't make any friends on the team by challenging Shaq. It didn't happen that he preferred early on to change away from the other players in the locker room and disappeared under his headphones in the back of the team plane. After games on the road, instead of hanging out with the team, he would sit in his room and watch videos. Sometimes it was Willy Wonka in the Chocolate Factory, which his mom would slip into his bag when she packed for his away games. But he would also catch movies his parents would never let him watch at home, like R-rated movies like Scarface, The Godfather. They kept him away from anything negative, violent, or overly sexual, says Rebecca Tonahill, who became friendly with Bryant during his rookie year. They thought they were doing him a favor, but they really weren't. He needed to know these things, if just for reference points, when hanging with the boys. His rookie season ended on an especially sour note in the last game of the playoffs against the Utah Jazz. Brian got the pass and shot an air ball like no other. He returned with his family to Philly for the summer to lick his wounds. He kept saying they already hate me. Ebron recalls, now they just hate me even more. So then after that, Kobe decided to basically suck it up and use his failures as motivation. And he spent the summer adding muscles to his lanky frame and claimed he was making a thousand practice shots a day to avoid ever missing another one. When he returned to LA, he even extended an olive branch to O'Neal and the rest of the team inviting them to his 19th birthday. So that shows you how young Kobe Bryant was back then. And when he invited the team to the birthday, of course, you know, many of the team players bought their girlfriends and things like that. So now this is the connection that Jocelyn Ebram has with Shawnee O'Neal. If you guys do not know, to this day, Jocelyn Ebram is still cool with Shawnee O'Neal and Evelyn Lozada, whose husband was also in the NBA way back then. So they kind of met at this party. So she's known Shaq and Shawnee and them since she was a teenager. So if Kobe was 19, she was probably about 17 at the time when she first initially met them. And she still has a close relationship with them to this day. So now I'm going to segue and talk about Vanessa Bryant and what she was going through at the time and, you know, how her life was. Now, this was an article from 2005. And basically, they were saying that Vanessa Lane was just another sheltered Orange County teen when she fell in love with the phenomenon. So they're doing an interview with Layla Lane, who is Vanessa's step cousin. And she's saying that five years ago when they were teenagers, Layla Lane's step cousin Vanessa excitedly pulled her aside and said, guess who I met? He called me. Kobe Bryant. Lane was like, sure, have another drink. No one believed her. If Vanessa Lane, then 17, was known for anything, it was for her sheltered life. Her parents scarcely permitted her to date. When she was with friends the year before at Magic Mountain, Layla Lane said that Vanessa had to call home hourly. Her one stab at glamour was for three months being a music video extra, and it fell into her lap when a company seeking fresh faces found her at a hip-hop concert. She had gotten a handful of jobs with her mom on set to chaperone her. Vanessa was eight and her sister Sophie was 18 when their mother, who was a shipping clerk at an electronics firm, where Lane, eight years her junior, was a middle manager. Vanessa's mother and her birth father divorced when she was a baby after which the father moved to Baja, Mexico, according to Vanessa's lawyer. Stephen Lane said that he met, that he met Sofia Urbieta as a single mother living in her sister's spare room. After their marriage, Vanessa began using the name Lane instead of her father's name, which was, which was Cornelio. In high school, she changed her name to Lane. 
Eventually, the family bought a four-bedroom home in Garden Grove. In Garden Grove, and they used Lane's father's Huntington Beach address to get Vanessa into his alma mater, Marina High School, where she could attend classes with Lane's niece, Layla and Sasha, with whom she was very close. Now, the Lane family says that Vanessa scarcely spoke to them after a bitter divorce between her mother and stepfather. We were all like sisters, Layla Lane said. If anyone looked at us sideways, Vanessa would go after them. In August 1999, she struck out a path towards her future husband at a concert in Irvine Meadows Amphitheater. She was heading into her senior year and her parents had let her attend with a close friend whose Jordanian-born parents were very protective. As they exited, friends said a man with a camcorder approached, saying he was looking for girls to be in a music video. Vanessa looked into the camera and gave her name and phone number. And when a call came... Her mother accompanied her to the shoot. We were all so excited. She was also in a Crazy Bone video, and then she got a call to be in a Snoop Dogg video. In the video, she's depicted as a siren in a metallic bikini with heavy black eyeliner, a far cry from the fresh scrubbed girl whose mother spent days deciding whether to let her attend the concert or not. It was soon after that that friends said that she was called to appear in a video for a rap album that Kobe Bryant was shooting. I'm going to go ahead and show you guys the video, and this is funny because this is the day that Kobe and Vanessa met on set. He's literally looking at this young girl. He's falling in love with her right there on camera. So y'all check this out. Okay, so you guys just saw that video. So all of this took place in 1999. Kobe Bryant was 21. Vanessa at the time was 16. She was an aspiring model and video vixen. And basically, like I said, she was working as a background dancer. And so even Snoop Dogg says that when he recalls seeing them on set, Kobe was really into Vanessa. So then Vanessa and Kobe start dating and classmates at the time were saying that they remember when Kobe would like inundate the school office with roses for Vanessa on the days that he came to pick her up from class. It was Kobe this, Kobe that. And then it got really bad that their romance was basically disrupting the school. And the school basically told her that she needed to finish her senior year at home because the media caught wind of their relationship. And this was a big deal in the late 90s. Like this was like all over the media. The, the media would be staked out in front of the high school to get pictures of Vanessa. And at the time, she's only 17. You know, she's still a child. So this was like a really big deal. But he was 21. But like I said, back then, it was just not like nobody cares. It was four year age difference. It was not a big deal back then. But um, complicating matters there was also financial trouble. And so this is what her stepfather is saying. His wife had been laid off for two years before and had a chronic back injury and had a chronic back injury, which prevented her from finding a job. And the family was mirrored in a bunch of debt. Keep that in mind. Four days after Vanessa and Kobe announced their engagement at her 18th birthday party, records show that the Lane signed bankruptcy papers. Here I am going bankrupt, said Lane. And my daughter is marrying Kobe Bryant. So as you see, the stepfather's really upset because he's going broke. Meanwhile, his teenage stepdaughter is getting shot with all these gifts. So like I said, their whole romance caused a lot of just drama, especially at the high school. There were helicopters flying over, flying over the high school to get pictures of her. And the courtship caused so much of a stir that they had to ban Kobe Bryant from coming near the campus because it, you know, it endangered the other children there. Um, They also stated that it set a bad example for school and the kids, but Kobe didn't understand the message when he would drop her off early in the morning. Because again, 
he was so, you know, he was still young minded. He was still young. He was sheltered. So he didn't understand the big deal. So then basically to fix all that, he ended up paying for Vanessa to be homeschooled. So then this article goes on to say, as disapproving as school officials were, it was nothing compared to the disappointment of the Bryant family who watched as Kobe became unnaturally attached to Vanessa, as one family member put it. With her long fire engine red fingernails and black lip liner, Vanessa had very little in common with the successful young woman that Kobe had romanced in the past. The family thought she was too young and uncultured, and the fact that she wasn't black, Lane's mother is Hispanic, and her father is white didn't help. His teammates didn't know what to make of Vanessa either. We all knew he got so attached to her because he needed a friend and somebody to hang out with, said fellow Lakers. I'm not sure if it was love or if he was just happy to have someone accept him with no complaints. He didn't understand that she was a kid and she was in awe of him. When Tona Hill asked Kobe what he saw in the 16-year-old, he responded, she's pure and innocent, not jaded by the world. So basically at this point, Kobe Bryant's family and his teammates and everybody's just hoping it's a fat, it's just a passing phase. Okay, you like her. She's a cute girl. Hopefully he'll move on and, you know, get back to his senses. And that's not what happened. And now this is where everything gets murky. A lot of times the media wants to make it seem that it's about race. And that was not necessarily true. Okay. It was bigger than her being white and Latina. The issue was... The reason why the parents did not attend the wedding, when he got married, um, it was only Vanessa, her mom, and the judge there, okay? So that says a lot that the whole family did not attend the wedding. Well, years later, the stepfather was interviewed because if you guys don't know, this was like back in 29, 2010, um, Vanessa had filed for divorce, She was saying that she wanted to file for divorce from Kobe and that allegedly Kobe had cheated with 105 women during their marriage. So this was all in the court documents that he's had numerous affairs and she wants to call it quits. So they had reached out to the stepfather years later and the stepfather was spilling a lot of tea. And he was saying the reason why, um, you know, Vanessa waited 10 years is because she learned from her mother who he considers a gold digger. So I'm going to go ahead and read to you guys this article. Last week, Vanessa Bryant surprised everyone when she filed for divorce after a rocky 10-year marriage to NBA star Kobe Bryant. Now her former stepdad, Stephen Lane, is alluding to her being a gold digger and claiming that she learned the rules from her spiteful mother. According to Stephen, there's a reason Vanessa waited until the 10-year mark to file for divorce. He says her mother taught her well to wait for the 10 year mark before divorcing in California. It's considered a long term marriage and then she gets paid for life until she remarries, just like her mother is doing me. I have to pay her mom $1,800 every month and clearly they don't need it. I have a six year old daughter and that money could be used towards her college fund or something. You'd think she'd care, but no, she's spiteful. Now, to be fair, um, the stepfather did cheat on Vanessa's mother. So that's what prompted the divorce. Sophia Lane divorced the stepfather two years after her daughter got married to Kobe. So at that point, she knew she'd be taken care of because there's a lot more to this marriage. Then he goes on to say Kobe and Vanessa lavished his wife with surprise gifts, a house full of furniture, Mercedes Benz 500, $120,000 in cash, payment of her cell phone, dental, credit card bills, payoffs of their mortgage. He began to fear that his wife's respect for him was crumbling. Vanessa's step-grandfather, Robert Lane, put it this way. All of a sudden, it wasn't, what does Steve want for dinner? It was, what does Kobe want? In an affidavit filed with their divorce papers, Vanessa Bryant, then 20, theorized that the stepfather was jealous because the gifts that she had given him, clothes, a computer, were less valuable than those that she gave her mother. Not so, says Stephen. It was that I became insignificant. So now they go on to talk about the prenup. And what a lot of people don't know is this was the main issue for the parents. Okay, fine. You want to fall in love with a girl that you've only known for a few months as opposed to your girlfriend that you've been with for years. You want to get married to this girl. You're grown. There's not too much we can do. But at least be smart and protect your assets. Kobe Bryant did no such thing. And the reason why he did not do anything is because the mother was threatening him with statutory rape. I've been saying this for a long time. 
Let me go ahead and finish reading this article to you guys. As far as the prenuptial agreement that was never signed, there's a story behind that as well. Vanessa's parents were said to have been hounding Kobe for dating their daughter who was still in high school and a minor at the time. So Kobe proposed to her on her 18th birthday. If he didn't, statutory rape charges could have ensued. Ironically, Vanessa's mother had been laid off and had no money and the family filed for bankruptcy days after the announcement. He was an adult. She was only 17. It was like, hey, wait a minute, Lane said. I was like, here I am going bankrupt and my daughter is marrying Kobe Bryant. None of Kobe's family, including his parents, attended the wedding and Kobe and Vanessa were going back and forth over the prenup for a few months before Kobe decided to just scrap it all together, according to Vanessa's stepfather. She came home one day and said something to the effect that Kobe didn't want the prenup and that he loved her too much for one. I believe wholeheartedly wasn't so much love as it was the mother threatening him. That you're not only going to take care of my daughter, you're going to take care of me and make sure that I don't want for anything because she's a minor and this could ruin your reputation with the NBA. It was already kind of looking shoddy that he was, you know, going after a 16 year old in high school. But if they wanted to pursue charges legally, they could have. But they weren't willing to because Kobe was willing to marry her and take care of the mother for life. So their backstory is not as lovey-dovey as the media tries to portray it now in 2020. And this is the whole reason why the family fell off and nobody on Kobe's side was there. And then what ended up happening is because they didn't go to the wedding, they didn't believe in the relationship. So in April 2001, they ended up getting married in a small Catholic church um, in Dana Point, and none of his family or teammates were there. They just didn't support the union, and people saw it for what it was. Um, So soon after, because his family refused to support him, he sold their Pacific Palisades mansion, and he sent the family packing back to Philadelphia. He did that because he wanted to be a man who was independent and handling his own responsibilities. The situation was about him growing up plain and simple. Kobe did not talk to his parents again until September 11, 2001, when he called his mother to make sure that they were safe and they were well. His family tried to play peacemaker by inviting Kobe and Vanessa to dinner during the holidays in Philadelphia, but Vanessa and Kobe declined. The following February, the couple went to Philadelphia for an all-star game. His old high school used the occasion to retire his jersey, and his parents attended the Friday night ceremony, sitting on the opposite side of the auditorium from his wife. They never made eye contact. So later on that summer, um, him and Vanessa announced that they were pregnant with their first child. Um, And it seemed like Kobe had something to share with his teammates. Before, he didn't really have a lot of common with them. But with his wife and kid, there were more experiences to share. So later on that year, his daughter was born and his parents were not at the birth. They really still did not have anything to do with Kobe. Um, So then all of the drama that happened in 2013, where his parents sold his... um, where his parents sold his memorabilia and they got an advance of 450000 from Golden Auctions. So this caused a huge rift. And then what ended up happening is that the parents, I believe they were forced, honey. They ended up releasing a statement via their lawyer with an apology, basically stating, we regret our actions and we apologize for any misunderstanding and unintended pain that we may have caused our son and appreciate the financial support that he has provided us over the years. Now, what I always found funny about this whole apology um, that the parents put out there It's very interesting that how Kobe took so much care of Vanessa's parents. Even before he died, one of the final pictures on his Instagram page was him having dinner with Vanessa Bryant and her mother. So as you see, when he was alive, you see him with Vanessa, the girls, and you see the grandmother, Sophia Lane, there as well. So that shows you that, you know, even... Up until his death, he was still very close with the mother. You saw her at all the games. Not all the games, but you saw her at a lot of the Lakers games, sitting courtside with uh, Vanessa. And what was really sad was how they were treated at the funeral. They weren't allowed to speak. I just find the whole situation, the treatment of Kobe Bryant's family really sad. But I wanted to do a backstory and show you guys that this was a lot deeper. And it wasn't so much about racism and them not liking her race. It was the role that the mother played in dividing 
the Bryant family and basically threatening, you know, what I'm saying their son and saying, if you don't marry our daughter, this is what's going to happen X, Y and Z. And she's been living very, very comfortably since then. So much so that when Vanessa rebutted, you know, her mother's claims, she even confirmed what the stepfather was saying years ago. See, he was the bad. The stepfather was the bad guy years ago when he did this interview. But even in her most updated response, she even confirmed that the mother is still carrying not only the stepfather's last name, but refusing to get remarried because she's able to live off of his alimony support for the past 20 years. So for the past 20 years, this woman has received $1,800 a month on top of everything that Kobe Bryant has provided for her. So Vanessa's mother is greedy and she's very spiteful and she basically used her daughter you know what I'm saying, to benefit herself. And I'm not saying that Kobe and Vanessa weren't in love and they weren't able to make it work after all these years. That's not what I'm saying. They're a beautiful couple. But her mother knew what she was doing. It's funny if this was a regular Joe Blow, Vanessa wouldn't have been able to go model and be in his music video. But because the mother knew that she was around celebrities, her daughter's gorgeous, you know, it might be a way for her daughter to catch a rich man. So her mother basically started living vicariously through Vanessa and, and used her daughter to entrap Kobe with threats of statutory rape in order to better her position in life to make sure that she lived comfortably. You know what I'm saying? So much so that she even through her marriage by the wayside didn't want to work on that filed for bankruptcy, filed for a divorce because she knew at the end of the day she'd be taken care of one way or another. So this video is in no way to knock Vanessa. She's a wife. She's a widow. She's mourning the loss of her daughter and her husband. This video was made to shine light on the mother, okay? Vanessa, in no way in my eyes, is a gold digger. This was a 16-year-old kid, 16, 17-year-old, you know, high school kid who was spitting and fell in love, you know, with Kobe Bryant, and he fell in love with her. Happens all the time. For your age difference, no big deal. The problem comes in with the way that her mom manipulated her, manipulated the situation. And now her mother is showing her true colors. Now that Kobe's gone, her mother is scared that she's not going to be able to live the lifestyle that she's become accustomed to via her daughter, which is so selfish that she's putting her daughter and her grandchildren through this. Who the hell sues their child for being a babysitter? When you are a grandparent, you should love coming to take care of your grandchildren and help out and things like that. So this is Vanessa's mother's real character. The stepfather has been saying this for years. Many of us have seen this for years. So many people like me and others, we we're not shocked that this is playing out in a courtroom because the mother has always been greedy. Not only once her daughter married Kobe and they were well off, she still kept charging the stepfather. Even though this man had to file bankruptcy, he had to start all over, he was struggling, she made sure not to remarry. She has been receiving alimony for the past 20 years on top of eating off of Kobe's legacy and money. So this woman, I'm sorry, she's disgusting. Her behavior is disgusting. And I feel really bad for Vanessa because Vanessa and Kobe were both very, very private people. And this would have never played out in, you know, the court of public opinion if it was not for the mother running to Telemundo, filing court cases and everything else. So that's why I say I'm not shocked by anything that the mother is doing and what she's done thus far. This is her true character. And unfortunately, Kobe wasn't able to see it or didn't know how to handle it because he was so young. Vanessa's not going to see it because she's young and that's her mother and you want to believe that your parents are good people but this is what Kobe Bryant's parents saw way back then and this is why they were not in support of the marriage because it wasn't a genuine connection it was almost like their son was forced to marry her because of the mother's threats and as a parent you're not going to co-sign something like that Again, I don't feel bad for her that she's out on the street or that she's struggling or she's not living the lifestyle that she became accustomed to. Um, welcome to Kobe Bryant's parents' world, okay? They never lived that lavish lifestyle. Kobe looked out for them, but he looked out for them a lot more modestly than he looked out for Vanessa's mother. So the whole situation is just really sad. It's going to be very interesting to see how it plays out. So anyways, you guys, I know that was a lot of reading. It was a huge breakdown, but I hope you guys appreciate this video. Please don't forget to like, share, and if you're not subscribed, please make sure you subscribe to my channel. This took a lot of work. It was a lot of research, but I'm glad I was able to put this together. I just want you guys to have a backstory on why I feel no ways about Vanessa's mom I'm suing and being upset. I could care less. And I also want you guys to know the real story behind why Kobe Bryant's parents just really don't fool with Vanessa and her mother. 
So let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. Let me know your thoughts about this whole breakdown. Leave a comment. Don't forget to like and share the video. And also, like I said, make sure you hit that notification bell so that way you can be down with the notification squad. Talk to you guys later. Deuces. Deuces.